Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house today. A special welcome to the guests. If you are a guest with us, I ask you to please fill out one of those care cards located in the pew in front of you. You can place that in the offering basket or give to the usher as you leave worship today. Let's, let's greet each other in the name of our Lord and Savior. This weekend is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. The theme we'll see in our worship is how, gag, how God gathers together believers from all nations, from every culture, from every country. We'll take a look, especially as he does that, looking forward to Judgment Day. Please join me as I sing our opening hymn, 908, Go Forth and Preach the Gospel. Please rise. This morning we follow the service setting two on page 172. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart, I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner.
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God and judge of all, you are righteous, but you are also forgiving and gracious. Lead us on your narrow path of righteousness, 
that we may know you and by your grace have a place at your heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson today and also the basis for the sermon comes to us from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah chapter 66. The Lord gathers all those nations before his throne. As for me, because of their works and their thoughts, the time is coming for me to gather people from all nations and all languages. They will come, and they will see my glory. Then I will set up a sign among them, and I will send out survivors from among them to the nations, to Tarshish, Pole, and Lud, to those who are archers, to Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands, who have not heard my message and have not seen my glory. Then they will declare my glory among the nations. Then they will bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. They will train them on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. In the same way that the people of Israel bring an offering and clean vessel to the Lord's house. Even from among these people I will take priests and Levites, says the Lord. For just as the new heavens and the new earth that I am making will remain standing before me, declares the Lord, in the same way your offspring and your name will stand. As often as one new moon follows another and one Sabbath follows another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. They will go out, and they will see the corpses of the ones who were rebelling against me. For their worm will not die, and their fire will not be quenched and all flesh will be horrified by them. The word of the Lord. And take the psalm of the day, Psalm 103.
Our second lesson from Hebrews chapter 12. Here the author shows those two mountains, the mountain of the Old Covenant, those who want to be saved by works of the law, which men not, but also that mountain of the New Covenant, those who are redeemed by the blood of Christ. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and to burning fire, to darkness, to gloom, to a raging storm, to the sound of a trumpet and to a voice that spoke. Those who heard the voice asked that not one more word be added, because they could not endure what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that even Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to tens of thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, to God, who is the judge of all, to the spirits of righteous people who have been made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new testament, and to the, and to, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better message than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 13. Jesus tells those following him that the way to salvation is narrow. Make sure we follow him and him alone. Jesus went on his way from one town and village to another, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? He said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, open for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I don't know, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets of the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown outside. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And note this, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a hymn of the day, 698, Seek Where You May to Find a Way.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours in abundance. From our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Every four years, the world gathers together to watch athletes compete in the Olympic Games. Even people who really have no interest in sports will tune in to some of those events. It's not always about winning who's standing on the gold, silver, or bronze podium. It's about those athletes that want to give all. They give it all for themselves and also for their country as people from all over cheer them on. And for those few days that the games are in session, it seems like people from every culture, from every country, come together, they unite as one to cheer everyone on. Another day is coming when people from every culture and country will be gathered together as well. It's not going to be in an Olympic arena to watch the parade of nations go before them or to cheer on world-class athletes. It's going to be all those faithful, all those who have held on to the faith as they come and gather before God's throne. The prophet Isaiah brought his book to a close. And in these closing verses, Isaiah really had a double fulfillment prophecy. Sometimes we refer to it as a mountaintop prophecy. You can think when you look at mountaintops in a distance, you see varying peaks. So there are two fulfillments of this. The first one happened during the destruction of, Judah, of Jerusalem in 70 AD. For years, God had put a hedge around the nation of Israel. He gave them his laws, his moral, his civil, his ceremonial laws that they were to follow. Not that God forgot about all the other nations or didn't care about them. No, Gentiles, they still came to faith. We have evidence of that. But Israel was his chosen people, his royal nation, the people from whom the Savior would come. But the people kept rejecting God in his message. Isaiah said, as for me, because of their works and their thoughts, the time is coming for me to gather people from all nations and all languages. They will come, and they will see my glory. The people, the Jews, they had seen God's glory. They saw that glory on Mount Sinai when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. They saw that glory as it came into the temple. They saw that glory as God brought them back from the land of captivity in Babylon. They heard Jesus himself preach and teach and do various miracles right in front of their eyes, but so many rejected. So God said, okay, now is the time to come for all people, all people from every nation, tribe, and language to know me, to know my name, to see my glory. So he accomplished it partly by that destruction of Jerusalem. He used the Romans for that chastisement. They came, they ransacked the city, they tore down the temple, the persecution broke out among the Jews and the early Christians, and what happened? Even though those people might not have been able to take many things, they took the most important thing, God's word, with them as they spread to the four corners of the earth. Isaiah said, Then I will set up a sign among them, and I will send out survivors from among them to the nations, to Tarshish, Pole, and Lud, to those who are archers, to Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands who have not heard my message and have not seen my glory. Then they will declare my glory among the nations. Wherever those people went, they gathered together as a congregation. They taught God's word. They lived out their life of faith among those people in those various cities. And those people, they took notice. And through God's word, through their actions, they saw that wonderful glory of God for themselves, and many people came to faith. 
It's as if those Jews, those Christians, were bringing those offerings to God. Not offerings of their wealth, but offerings of these souls, these souls for whom God had sent his son to die, those souls for whom forgiveness, life, and salvation was won by Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. They came before God's throne. And even they became priests and Levites. Jesus says, Then they will bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. They will bring them on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and dromedaries. Dromedaries are just camels. To my holy mountain, Jerusalem, says the Lord. In the same way that the people of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel to the Lord's house. Even from among these people I will take priests and Levites, says the Lord. No longer would it just be those Levites serving as priests in the temple. But even those Gentiles would have an opportunity to preach and to teach and to share God's word with others. We thank God for that. The gospel has come to us. We don't live in the land of Israel. We are not Jews, but we are Gentiles. But yet God has gathered us together. It would be too small of a thing for just one nation, one nationality, one culture to enjoy that wonderful news of the gospel, but God's message of forgiveness has gone out to all people. And so we cherish it. We hold on to it. These words also spur us in spreading that gospel as well. Maybe instead of those countries listed here, maybe we think of countries in Europe, in Asia, South America, Latin America, places in North America where we cannot go, where God's word is still being spread, where those people, they are still coming as those wonderful offerings before the Lord and Savior of all. God will gather those people before his throne. And that's the other fulfillment that the prophet Isaiah was talking about here. Not just that fulfillment of those people being united in the faith. Right now, yes, we are united with all those, but we're all over the world. But the day is going to come when we will all be together, and that's Judgment Day. God took Isaiah to that heavenly Jerusalem, to that heavenly Mount Zion. And there all the believers of all time will be gathered, people from everywhere, but yet they will have one voice, one language, and they will proclaim God's praises forever. Man, that's going to be a great day. A great day when we will see our Lord and Savior, when he will bring us into his glory to live with him forever. But his prophecy does end with a dire picture. Isaiah said, they will go out and they will see the corpses of the ones who were rebelling against me. For their worm will not die and their fire will not be quenched and all flesh will be horrified by them. Suffering that can find no relief. Pain that will never end. Maybe we live with pain but we can bear it, right? We know it's going to come to an end eventually. But can we even begin to imagine a pain that will last an eternity? It's what God pictures for all those who try to find salvation outside of him. To those people who think that maybe they will be saved by their good works as long as they do enough good to outweigh the bad, they will be okay in God's sight those people who think that they can follow some other religion, some other God besides the true God, the triune God. To those who maybe think that, well, once they die, that's it. Nothing is going to be left after that. Their worm will not die. Their fire will not be quenched. But to those who remain faithful, he will give the crown of life. To those who hold on to their faith, he will bring into the perfection of heaven. And so may we hold on to that faith. May we cherish it all of our days. May we continue to nourish it through his word and sacrament as often as we can. God, he's going to gather his people before his throne. 
all those whom he has called to faith, to the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word, all those who will escape the great destruction. And as we look forward to that day, we rejoice. We look forward to that day when we will be before that throne of God with all the other believers. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise and we'll join in confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed that's found on page 181. The Apostles' Creed on page 181. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayer of the church. Our prayer is found starting on page 3 in your worship folder. In our special prayers today, we also have a prayer of peace and comfort for the family of Frank Keekafer, whom the Lord took home to heaven. Graveside services will take place next Saturday. Also for the family of Sally Steffen, whom the Lord took to his side in heaven. Her Christian funeral will be at Capsule Murray Funeral Home tomorrow at noon. Then also we have a prayer for the family of Lou Dykstra, brother-in-law of Dave Stunney and Gail White, whom the Lord took to himself in heaven as well. Also, we have a prayer of thanksgiving for a successful surgery for Jeff Quant. We bow our heads in prayer. O God, you are the judge of all, yet you have sprinkled us with the blood of Christ and count us as your righteous ones. Your love is with those who fear you. You have brought us to yourself by Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Keep us near to you that we may confess your name in word and action, and finally take our place at the feast in your eternal kingdom. Your love is with those who fear you. Send your word to distant lands that have not heard of your fame, and gather people of all nations and languages that they may come and see your glory in the kingdom of God. Your love is with those who fear you. You have committed to your holy church the care and nurture of your children. Give wisdom to those who teach and those who learn, that they may rejoice in the knowledge of your truth and serve you from generation to generation. Your love is with those who fear you. You did not treat us as our sins deserve, but have removed our transgressions from us. Let the word of your grace and love in Christ lift the guilt from those who feel its burden and turn to you. Your love is with those who fear you. You forgive all our sins and heal all our, all our diseases because of your compassion. Have mercy on all who wait for you. Give healing to the sick and rest to the weary. Your love is with those who fear you. All wise and mighty Father, our times are in your hands, and you work all things for the good of those who love you. Strengthen our faith in your promises, and comfort those who mourn for Frank Kefer, Sally Steffen, and Lou Dykstra, that with faith we may look forward to seeing our loved ones again and seeing you face to face. O God, you always govern your creatures with your tender mercy. 
hear our prayers and accept our thanks as you helped your servant, Jeff Kwan, through surgery. Continue to visit him with your saving grace and salvation and give him the medicine of heavenly grace. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Almighty and eternal God, you are the brightness of the faithful. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to the nations by the light of Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we bring our offerings with a joyful, trusting, and cheerful heart, we offer our prayer to you. O Lord, stir up the wills of your faithful people, that those who have freely received your blessings may freely give from your blessings. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue with our next hymn, 798, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. Please rise. We join our closing prayers, and those are found on page 171. 
Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn, 606, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Once again, good morning to everyone. Just a couple of announcements to draw your attention to. Please take note that next Sunday is our Christian Education Sunday. It's also going to be our church picnic. Weather permitting is going to take place at Lakeview Park, so please bring lawn chairs, a dish to pass. Everything else will be provided. If the weather doesn't cooperate, we'll be downstairs in the church basement. So if you go to the park, we're not there. We'll be downstairs in the basement. Hope to see many of you there for that. Also, please take note that handbells and choir is be starting to begin soon. So if you have questions on that, you can ask one of the pastors, call the church office, or ask Mrs. Welch questions for handbells or Mr. Barnett with any questions for choir. With that, wish you God's richest blessings upon your day. May keep you safe until we meet again.